So welcome everybody. My name is Tony Studer. I'm an assistant professor of the Department of Crop Sciences and I'm going to be your guide tonight. And so I'm going to guide you through this virtual crop sciences experience where you'll hear from faculty, students, and staff about the opportunities that await you here in the Department of Crop Sciences at the University of Illinois. And so myself, I, I have a research program here. I teach graduated undergraduate genetics uh, and I have undergraduate researchers in my lab, uh, including two freshmen starting this year. And so with that, uh, it's nice to meet everybody. And without further ado, I'll turn it over to our department head, Adam Davis. Hey everybody, uh, thanks so much for joining us tonight. I know you have lots of other things you could be doing right now, but we really appreciate you being with us and uh, want to share our excitement about Department of Crop Sciences with you. Before I get going on my slides, I'd like to see, uh, you can uh, raise your hand in the, um, you know, click in the participant screen with the virtual raise hand. Who has an idea about what you are seeing in the picture behind me? I will move out of the way. I took this picture two weeks ago. And uh, so that should give you a clue. It was taken at the dairy farm here in Urbana, out at the corner of Windsor and Race. And uh, there's something actively growing in that field behind me. I don't see any hands yet. Or you can put it in the chat if you think you know what it is. I was particularly excited to see it because it was following, um, they had just harvested some silage corn out of this field. And so this is a cereal rye cover crop. So that, if it, you're a couple of things, it could be this time of year, it, it, somebody might have gotten a jump on planting some wheat, but in this case, the farm staff got a jump on planting some cereal rye and that helps uh, keep nutrients uh, from moving on that farm. Uh, next slide, please. So I'm gonna give you a little overview here of what we do in the crop sciences department and why it matters. First animation. So crop sciences is plural. It's a cluster of allied science disciplines ranging from basic to fundamental uh, to applied um, that cover different aspects of agriculture. So looking at these icons around this circle going from the top and then moving counterclockwise, we have plant improvement represented in crop sciences. And so we've got breeders and fundamental plant sciences. And you can see we've got an ear of corn and also a pumpkin here. Both of these are very common crops in Illinois. And in fact, Illinois is the pumpkin capital, capital of the US uh, over in Morton, Illinois. We've got next to the left of that plant protection, uh, not, not next animation, next icon. In, uh, that little caterpillar represents our plant protection disciplines. So we've got uh, entomology in study of insects and plant pathology in study of diseases and weed science. These are our allied plant protection disciplines. And then the next uh, icon is a, a stack there, kind of looks like a barrel. That represents data. We have a long history of data analysis and statistics and um, special methods for data acquisition in this department. And that final icon, uh, a seed in the soil represents agronomy and horticulture. These are the um, plant production and ecology um, disciplines that we have. So crop sciences actually spans a lot of disciplinary uh, matter. Next animation. So the reason we do what we do in all these various dimensions is that we're here to address grand challenges that are confronting humanity. And if you take a look at some of these icons on the top from the left to the right, we've got you know, continuing population growth. Uh, we're projected to hit um, around 9 billion by 2050. And by the end of the uh, century, top out at around 11 billion. So we're gonna to have to figure out how to greatly increase our food supply to meet this growing population. We've also got global change signified by that thermometer there. And we'll have to figure out how to uh, continue to produce crops under 
increasingly variable conditions as well as uh, in, under increasing stress conditions for plants. We're also trying to protect our water quality and soil quality while we're doing this. And we're also trying to produce renewable sources of energy for the future of humanity. Uh, next animation. And all of these things come together to address the triple bottom line of sustainable agriculture, productivity represented by that cornucopia, profitability represented by those coins, and environmental and human health represented by that landscape on the right. So we believe that what we do really is some of the most important stuff you could work on. And we bring these different disciplinary skills to bear upon these many challenges that face us. Next slide, please. The goal of our program is to train the next generation of scientific leaders to develop and implement agricultural innovations that balance productivity, profitability, and sustainability. We each intersect with this goal in some way. And there is a lot of demand for people trained to do this. Um, as you'll hear later in these presentations, there are many different types of jobs that uh, in, require crop sciences training. And we're not just about producing mountains of corn, we're balancing that with economic uh, profitability and environmental sustainability. Next slide, please. And so I want to end my five minutes of introduction to you guys by talking about how you can grow your future and why you should grow your future at UIUC Crop Sciences. So first of all, we've got 21st century programs that are addressing 21st century problems. There are many diverse paths through a crop sciences degree, as you'll find out as you listen to the descriptions of the different majors. We have a new four plus one program that allows you to earn a BS and your MS in a five year period, and you should inquire about that. We also have lots of scholarships for incoming freshmen as well as uh, established students. And our program is designed to provide experiential education in a variety of ways, including internships with industry and startup companies, um, research assistantships in professors' labs, uh, connections with industry mentors, several clubs that you can participate in, and many opportunities for travel. Thanks for your attention, and I'll pass it back to Tony. Great, thanks, Adam. Before we go any further, I just wanted to take a moment uh, to draw your attention to a couple different features of Zoom. You're likely dealing with Zoom a lot these days, but uh, we're gonna go ahead and launch a poll just as kind of a way to figure out where you're from and maybe a couple of things that you've been doing um, over the past few months as you've been in quarantine. Also, I'd like to draw your attention to the chat box. And so we have a few crop science ambassadors who are current students in the Department of Crop Sciences uh, who can answer your questions. And so. Uh, feel free to actively engage in the chat. They'll be watching that, faculty will be watching that. And so if you have questions, we'll, we'll hopefully have time at the end for that. And if not, um, certainly ask away in the chat box as we go along here. And so people are voting uh, about where they're from. We'll just leave that open for like another five seconds or so, so we can move things along. But if you, I'm, I'm very interested in, in the second question in particular, you know, what people have been doing different hobbies they might have picked up. Okay, so Santiago can go ahead and end the poll and, and uh, share the results. And so we can see uh, where people are coming from. There's a few from, from other places in the US, but mostly uh, Chicago and suburbs and other places in Illinois. And online gaming seems to be um, popular, but not quite as popular as gardening. So that, that seems great. So Adam gave you a great introduction to the department as a whole and some of the grand challenges that we face. Um, I'm going to just talk a little bit about the crop sciences major. And so there's a lot of things that fit under the umbrella of crop sciences. And so I'm going to talk about those now. And I have a shameless plug for popcorn here because that's one of the things that I work on. You can advance the slide. And so agriculture uh, is one of the oldest professions and it always embraces technology. 
And so uh, technological advancements have really, and innovations have driven um, our ability to feed the world. And so if we go on, you, crop sciences to me means a host of different things. And so going counterclockwise in this diagram from molecular biology and, and biotechnology to food and feeding people um, around row crop agriculture, markets to drive commodity prices, uh, basic plant biology, uh, thinking about agriculture in an ecosystem, and then plant protection and all the things that we have to do to have food security. And so all of these things um, fall under crop sciences, but I think one of the important things to realize is, is this the people, uh, that connection of science to people and food um, that is one of the things that makes crop sciences so special. And so um, one of the things you see here is under that major crop sciences, there's a lot of different study areas. And so this is where our students break out currently. And, and these different study areas are a way that students can come in and tailor their degree in crop sciences under that crop science umbrella uh, to their interests. Next slide, please. And so the reason I'm here tonight is I really believe that we need more minds in crop sciences and hopefully uh, that's your mind. And your path may not be as straight uh, or through a foreign field like mine is, uh, but I think that you'll see the variety of things in crop sciences uh, and hopefully it'll take your interest and you can see that where you can make an impact. Next slide. And it seems from the questions that people have submitted that there's a lot of people interested in this intersection of uh, the digital uh, and computer sciences and crop sciences. And so with that, I'm gonna turn it over to the second major that's offered in our department, uh, which Matt Hudson will talk about. Matt. Hey everybody. So I'm gonna to talk to you about something that is a uh, little orthogonal to um, a lot of the other stuff in crop sciences, but I hope you'll understand by the end of this that um, crop science and computer science together are perhaps one of the most compelling combinations in academia right now, particularly when you look at what's gonna happen in the future 20 or 30 years from now. Next slide, please. So here's some uh, crop scientists at the beginning of the last century. And you can see that back then, um, the Department of Crop Sciences on the Morrow plots would, you know, where we'd put our bowler hats on and we'd go dig some dirt, right, and take soil samples. And this process took up most of the time. It was not something that anyone was really concerned about, that we had too much data to deal with. Rather, you'd do an experiment that would take hours or days or sometimes years, you'd get one number, you'd write it down in a book, and then you'd do some calculations on it. And the calculations were the fun part. Next slide, please. So things are a little bit different now. So back in the 19 teens or the 1920s, or you know, even as recently as the 60s and 70s, you could write most of the data you got from a crop sciences experiment down in a lab book. Um, the kinds of sources of data that are revolutionizing crop sciences, agriculture, and a lot of allied disciplines now are completely on a different scale. You've got satellites um, transmitting huge amounts of data about all the land on the earth, and most of the land on the earth is doing agriculture. We have cell phones in the hands not only of you guys, but also of most farmers. And even in third world countries, most farmers have cell phones, and that's their primary means of communicating and obtaining information about the crop. Um, drones are increasingly used and mathematical models of climate and agriculture and crop yields are increasingly the primary way in which a lot of decisions about agriculture are made. So crop sciences has moved from being a discipline dominated by physical experimentation to one dominated by data, data analysis and statistics. Next slide, please. So here's some idea of what kind of amounts of data we're talking about. So the kind of data you get from 
soils and physiology experiments, the same things those guys in the bowler hats were doing um, 100 years ago. These days, because we use a lot of sensors and we use a lot of experiments that use machines that are linked to a computer that output things like um, you know, soil microbiome data, we, we're looking at um, one and nine to 10 zeros, so gigabytes per field per year of data. That's a fair bit of data, that's, but that's manageable on a PC. But when we start talking about genomics, then we're three zeros more. So we're in the terabytes range per plant. So each plant has got a terabyte or more of information in its genome. When we talk about large breeding populations, genomics gets very data heavy very quickly. And genomics is one of the first disciplines to get very serious about data in crop sciences. And we use large computer clusters in genomics. We don't get a lot done on PCs anymore. Um, when we talk talking about some of these newer technologies though, such as putting sensors and cameras on planters and sprayers and combines in a large number of farms, we get three more zeros. Weather and climate data, again, three more zeros. That's petabytes. So that's in the range of the amount of data that is present in all the letters written down in all U United States academic libraries. And that requires some very serious specialized hardware. At the University of Illinois, we have the National Center for Supercomputer Applications, which is one of the few places that can deal with data on that scale. But some of the remote sensing satellite data, the image data, gets into the exabyte range now. And that's yet another three zeros. Every word ever spoken by every human being that ever lived is about five exabytes. And we're talking about doing analysis on exabyte scale data sets, just to give you an idea of how much data that really is. So obviously, this is something that requires both very specialized hardware and all the analysis has to be done by programs. There's no way a human being can deal with that. Next slide, please. So one upside of all of this huge data deluge, as we call it, is there are huge opportunities for agriculture professionals that understand computer science. So agriculture desperately needs computer science experts who can write better algorithms and programs, but who also understand agriculture. Um, all those wireless subscribers in Africa and India and Asia and South America, if we can connect them better to the data about their food supply and their farm, the implications of that could be huge. We're talking about enormous numbers of lives that would be enhanced by better nutrition, food access, better economics. We need to get farms connected in the way that modern factories tend to be. You know, so, so buildings now have their own operating systems. They have software specially written that controls a factory. Machines have networks within something like a, a car factory. Agriculture is gonna be there very soon if the things that we're doing at the University of Illinois go the way we think they're gonna go. Next slide. So in order to help deal with the huge demand for what's a relatively rare combination of subjects, we have developed a crop science, computer science joint undergrad program. This is a joint degree offered both by the Department of Computer Science, and the Department of Crop Science at the University of Illinois. They're both very highly ranked departments. Students do have to pay tuition at the computer science rate, but they take all the computer science core classes essentially and all the crop sciences core classes. And the two parts of the degree have equal weight. Next slide. So, you do have to take a lot of computer science classes. So for those of you who might be less confident in your grades, or whatever in that area, this is something to consider. But for those of you who really think that computers are something you like, this is all the same classes that our CS majors take. Um, there's also a technical track if you wanna take additional CS classes. Next slide. Um, this, 
pie chart shows you how much of the degree is composed by computer science and crop sciences core and electives. You can see that the computer sciences core is slightly bigger than the crop science core. And there's also the math core because there's two large um, core requirements for this degree. The core classes occupy a fair bit. You know, there's not a lot of electives you get the chance to take. But when you come out with those two cores, you will know both disciplines in a significant amount of detail. Next slide, please. So why is this important outside of our university? Well, as one example, when we started talking about this degree, um, Bayer Climate Corporation, um, which is one of the largest players in the, the digital agriculture sphere, heard about this degree and they said, we wanna give a scholarship to everybody who takes this. Everyone who has admitted into the crop science computer science program gets a $10,000 scholarship spread over four years. If you're really outstanding, there's an additional $10,000 available. And this is in addition to the other department scholarships. So at least one major corporation has already put their money where their mouth is and said, we really care about this. We really need young people to take this degree because the future of agriculture and the future of our company depends on this. Next slide, please. <laughs> yeah, so this is an article they put in the News Gazette, which as, you know, not terribly flattering picture of me in front of my growth chamber there. But the reason I put it in is their headline I liked. I found something that combines my passions, right? I like computers and I like plants and agriculture. I think the two of them are incredibly important. If that's you, this degree is for you. Next slide. Okay, so I'll hand it over to Steve Moose now and uh, I'll answer questions in the chat. Thank you very much. So, so I don't, are you gonna just leave the slide there? Is that? Uh, uh, you, can, you can advance one more, it's got the word cloud. I, okay. Yeah, so um, I'm uh, Steve Moose. I'm a professor in, in crop sciences and basically I'm a, a farmer who became a scientist and I aim to bring science back to the farm. I teach a course in biotechnology for students in the crop sciences major, but also students all over campus take it. Um, and I've also been an academic advisor to many of our undergraduate uh, students. Um, and so I just wanted to tell you that what a crop sciences degree can do for you, and I think I can summarize it in three things. Um, first, you'll gain a deeper knowledge of agricultural systems in a, in a broad sense. Um, you'll have these opportunities to put that learning in the classroom into practice through experiential opportunities, um, and also develop a broad professional network. So you saw the pie chart of, of students who are in agribusiness and plant biotechnology and plant protection. And so being in this degree um, gives you a network of people who are in sort of all the major areas of the agricultural system. Um, and so that foundation is then very helpful in your future career. Um, about half of our graduates enter the workforce right out of the bachelor's degree, um, relatively well-paid jobs uh, compared to other bachelor's degrees. Um, and some of the job titles you see are there in the word cloud. Um, in addition to sort of an off-ramp at the bachelor's level, um, about half of our students pursue advanced degrees. Um, those are often graduate, either master's degrees or PhDs eventually, some who become future science leaders with PhD degrees. And then those people kind of end up in three main areas. Either they stay in the university sort of academic system or they work for industry, some of the major companies or even small startups in, in this space, um, or they work for in the government, in the public sector. Um, and I think our graduates kind of split into those three areas. Um, not only in, do students pursue graduate studies in the discipline, but also some go on to other professional schools such as medical, dental and law school. Um, actually patent law is a big deal in agriculture. And so 
people who understand agriculture and then have a law degree are very um, valued. Um, people also go into K through 12 education and then just business leaders. Um, so there, there are many paths possible. I mean, mine is, I grew up on a, on a small dairy farm in high school. My sister described me as a genetics geek. Um, so I actually went to college and got a degree in biology and biotechnology, a PhD eventually in genetics. I worked for a while for uh, DeKalb Genetics and Monsanto, um, bought the company while I was there. So I worked in industry for a while and then I've been at the university for almost 20 years. Um, so that's one path, but there are many others that are possible. And another example is, is Dr. Jurai Carter. And um, she earned her crop sciences degree and now is a data scientist for John Deere. So I'll let her share her story. All right. Hi, everyone. Um, uh, so I'm Jure Carter and I'm a crop science uh, alumni. So I can tell you a little bit um, about myself and uh, my experiences and, and currently what I do. Um, so right now I'm a data scientist at uh, John Deere um, in Research Park. So we have a technology innovation center there um, where we have a data sciences team. So I help uh, lead that team and we have undergrads through graduate students um, that work on our team throughout the year, including the summer. And so um, my journey started, um, I was actually, um, it was my uh, last semester of high school um, and I was, I'm from Champaign. Um, and so we had to do an internship uh, program in high school and I actually worked uh, in the crop sciences department um, in high school, which was uh, really fun. Um, and so that was my kind of in, uh, first introduction um, into crop sciences. Nobody in my family farms or comes from a farming background. So um, I knew absolutely nothing uh, um, about the, the major coming in. So it was, it was pretty exciting. Um, a few different things that I did uh, while I was pursuing my, my undergrad. Um, one was I actually worked in Dr. Moose's lab for a couple of years and got to work with some great students and um, not only students that were undergrads, but also graduate students as well, helping them with their research and getting a lot of experience um, uh, working uh, in a lab and what a lab environment is like. Um, and I also got to do an independent um, research project as well that I was able to present at the undergraduate research symposium that the University of Illinois puts on um, every spring. And so that was a really a great opportunity to um, learn about the research process and understand what it takes to go from an idea to um, a, a kind of a deliverable, a completed solution, so, you, uh, so to speak. So a few other things that I did um, in crop sciences. So I was part of the department, um, the department's club field and furrow, which was really great. Um, and I got to travel with them to a couple of um, American Society of Agronomy meetings. So field and furrow is a uh, is part of SACES, which is the student, uh, the student chapters for the American Society of Agronomy. Um, and so a couple of places I got to go was Cincinnati, Ohio, as well as uh, Tampa, Florida, and got to learn about all kinds of um, cool things going on um, in the ag space. And a couple of things I participated um, in there included the national speech contest, um, in which I was able to, to get second place, and then also participating in their national writing co competition. Um, and I ended up getting my first ever journal article published from that competition um, that was focused on how social media was being used in agriculture at the time. So those were some pretty cool um, ex experiences there as well. Um, a couple of other things that I did too, I also worked at the National Soybean Research Lab one summer. Um, it wasn't as a research focused, um, but it was a chance to understand what they did in the lab and some of the events um, that they held and learn about some of the research that they did, um, especially in the international markets around um, soybeans and, and other countries and how they're used in other countries. Um, I was also part of uh, Sigma Alpha, which is a professional agricultural sorority in the College of ACES. And so there was also field trips and other types of professional events um, that we learned about agriculture um, as well. So I would say, um, 
after that, I decided to go into uh, graduate school. So actually last year I graduated with my uh, PhD in informatics and my dissertation focused on um, how farmers and other agriculture professionals uh, were using Facebook um, to find ag related information. Um, and so, you know, having this crop science uh, background and then um, going into graduate school and then um, being able to have the opportunity to actually intern at John Deere um, here in Research Park before coming full time, it really helped me um, apply that knowledge. It's one of those things where sometimes it can be a little hard to see, wait, how am I going to use this in the future? Um, and I can tell you 100% it gets used um, in the future. And one of the great things is that um, at Deere, even though they're a manufacturing company, technically, um, they make equipment to be used with crops. That's the point, right, is growing crops and then harv harvesting them. You have to have an understanding of that domain knowledge to really make an, uh, an impact there. And so going into the data science space, um, when we're doing things like designing algorithms and predictive models and things for the equipment for calculating um, yield and um, you know how much should we spray the weeds and how much needs to go into the machine and all those calculations and things, having the domain knowledge to apply it to that is something that's been really, really um, uh, valuable and also important for my job. Um, and I think to kind of, um, you know, coming off of the, um, you know, earlier statements about the computer science plus crop science, um, there's reasons why the word science is there and why there's the word science and data science, because it is a science, there's a process there. Um, so definitely with the crop science um, degree, learn about the scientific process and what that looks like and how that gets applied um, to the real world. And so combining that with data science, you go in and it's not just about, okay, we're going to just run some code, but it's about how do you get from, um, like I mentioned earlier, an idea, a thought, a problem that you're trying to figure out to a solution. And that's kind of how I connected those together. Well, thank you for your testimonial there. It's, it's fun to hear about how a student takes uh, the degree that they work so hard for and then translates that into the workforce. So next up, uh, you've heard about uh, the degrees, you've heard about uh, job opportunities and things that you can do with those degrees, but there's also another side of this and that's what you can do on campus uh, while you're getting your degree. And so to talk about one of the clubs here on campus, um, I'm going to introduce Hannah. So you can take it away, Hannah. Hi, so I'm Hannah and I'm one of the co-presidents for Horticulture Club and then I'm also the chair for our flower show. And basically Horticulture Club is one of the RSOs on campus and I like it specifically because it's not necessarily something that has requirements. It's not something that's focused on one specific part of crop science or horticulture or anything like that. We're a very good introduction to plants and crop science in general. We have a bunch of different events. I mean, we're doing apple picking and cider making soon. We do pumpkins, we make natural wreaths. We do the flower show mom's weekend, which is a very big flower show. We do when we sell a bunch of plants to support a club. We do terrarium labs. Um, we do nature walks, we work with the tree walk on campus. So we try to make sure that there's something that everybody could get interested in, whether maybe you don't particularly like gardening, well, we'll show you the food science or we'll show you how to use these in art and things like that. Um, and then if we could just go to the next page really quick. And then we try to stay pretty active on our on Instagram and Facebook, but Facebook especially. So if you guys are interested at all in seeing what we're doing this year or just want to get in touch with us about anything, um, we try to post a lot about little planting tips or advice after labs and things like that. And this year, because of the social distancing restrictions, we're posting a lot of our labs online and making them things you can do from home. So even if you guys aren't necessarily part of the university yet, but you want to do something fun and plant related, you can watch our videos and join some of our labs if you want. I think that's pretty much it for us. Great, thank you, Hannah. And if you have any questions for her, uh, you can just type them in the chat and she can get back to you. Uh, and then the next slide, I'm gonna introduce the faculty liaison to Field and Furrow, which you heard mentioned previously, uh, and that's Dr. Andrew Margano. Hi, everyone. Uh, 
everyone. So my name is Andrew. I am the faculty uh, advisor for the Field and Furrow Club on campus. A bit of background here. This is the, I think, one of the oldest clubs ever on our campus. It goes back to whenever Field and Furrow began as a national institution. So as you can see, a lot has changed from 1960 to 90, or to 2019. Um, as a bit of a trivia here, uh, the the uh, U of I team for Field and Furrow killed so hard at competitions that they had to rewrite the rules at the Tri Society conferences to uh, limit how many people from each campus could compete. So we have quite a long history of doing very well with this club. So what is the club? The club is basically a undergraduate focused group. They meet uh, once a month. It's typically the first Tuesday of the month, and it's a way to in a uh, laid back setting to talk about opportunities and networking in the agricultural sector. So as a result, there are field trips that are outside of those monthly get togethers. And oftentimes there are speakers who come to those meetings and these speakers vary from private sector to government sector. They typically uh, over the course of, an, of uh, about 90 minutes or so, uh, talk with students, share their uh, experiences. And it's also a great way to meet potential contacts for employment down the road. Uh, there's a few other things that are done by the club and these include things like sales to fundraise, uh, sales at our annual um, agronomy day, as well as a pumpkin sale typically held about now in November. So for more information, um, there's the email of the club, uh, as well as the Facebook group of this Field and Furrow Club. Thanks, Andrew. And so the next part of our presentation this evening is a faculty panel. And so we have a few faculty here. They're gonna talk a little bit more about their research uh, and the programs that they run on campus. And so first up, we have Dr. Sarah Hind. Hi everyone, my name is Sarah Hind and I'm an assistant professor here in the department. And I joined back in 2017, and now I lead a research team that works to improve protection strategies for horticultural crops. My team includes both undergraduate and graduate students, as well as postgraduate students who are here in the photo on the bottom left. Now, science is a collaborative effort, and I rely on my team to perform the experiments that happen in our laboratory. The plant systems that we're using are tomato and pepper plants, as well as cucurbits, including pumpkin and squash. We study how plants protect themselves from diseases, including bacterial spot disease that you can see here on the tomato and pumpkin fruits, as well as from insect pests like root, corn rootworm, which you can see on the right. One of our outreach projects is partnering with Illinois fruit and vegetable growers to understand how extensive use of copper treatments in some agricultural systems could lead to the growth of copper resistant pathogens. By improving our understanding of what's happening here in Illinois production fields, we hope to develop new management strategies that are more effective and sustainable. I teach two courses in the department. The first course is CPSC 486, Plant Growth and Development, which is an upper level course for juniors and seniors, as well as graduate students. The second course, which I will teach for the first time this coming spring, is HORT 223, The Intelligent Behavior of Plants. And it is a general education course that fulfills the advanced composition requirement for graduation. Next slide, please. One current project that I'm really excited to talk to you guys about is how we're setting up a genetic modification system for pumpkin plants. As Adam mentioned at the beginning, Illinois is known as the pumpkin state, since Illinois farmers produce about half of the pumpkins grown in the United States, including almost all of the processing pumpkins used to make canned pumpkin. We spent the better part of two years optimizing a protocol that allows us to add or modify genes in pumpkin plants by using bacteria to transfer DNA into the pumpkin genome, and then selecting and regrowing the modified plants. One gene we've targeted as a proof of concept is called PDS, and the plants that lack this gene look white, like the plant you can see here in the photo. Now, we're working to generate plants with different factors targeting corn rootworms, which are a major pest of corn here in the Midwest. As I mentioned before, we wouldn't be able to get our research done without a great team of scientists, including an awesome group of undergraduate students. We're always looking to add more students to our team. So if you're interested or you have any questions about undergraduate research, please feel free to message me here in the chat or contact me using my information found on the Crop Sciences website. 
Thanks. And now I'm gonna hand it off to Dr. Juan Alvarez. Hello everyone, um, I'm Juan Arbelaez. Uh, I'm originally from Colombia. I did my bachelor's in uh, biological sciences and I love diving and I thought I wanted to be a marine biologist. Uh, but all that changed when I did an internship uh, at the International Center for Tropical Agriculture, or SEAD, where I began to implement what I learned on genetics and molecular biology and statistics into a very exciting and applied and impactful uh, science such as crop science. So I began working on rice and that led me to pursue a PhD in plant breeding and genetics at Cornell. And I wanted to keep working in, agricult in international agriculture. So I joined the International Rice Research Institute in the Philippines where I work as a rice breeder, uh, developing rice cultivars for East Africa, South and Southeast Asia. Um, next slide, please. I joined uh, the Faculty uh, of Crop Sciences about a year ago, and my title is in International Crop uh, Plant Breeding, so literally it combines my two passions, uh, crop improvement and international agriculture. I run an active oat improvement program where we're trying to increase uh, the nutritional value in oats and its utility in sustainable agriculture as a cover crop. We employed a lot of uh, undergraduate students, not only to do a lot of the applied work in the crop improvement program, but also to manage and analyze large data sets. We are a data driven program. Uh, next slide, please. I also keep a lot of my international collaborations and I work closely with many different groups around the world. Uh, this is a work that I'm doing with the Latin American Irrigated Rice Fund, uh, where we are trying to improve rice grain quality for Latin America and the Caribbean. And we use advanced genetics uh, to identify genes associated with grain quality in rice. Here is an example of this waxy gene, which pretty much explains if you're going to get a sticky rice, like the one you will eat in sushi, or a loose, fluffy rice, the ones that you will eat in a gumbo. Uh, next slide, please. So finally, I want to uh, you know, tell you that there is a great and exciting career in international agriculture when you work in crop sciences. This graph is showing you about 15 different international research institutes uh, that do crop sciences that are very interdisciplinary where they work in genetics, biotechnology, social sciences, communications, and crop improvement. And uh, they are in the front front to uh, fight uh, hunger and improve the livelihood of farmers. So I'll final my presentation with that. Thank you. Hi, I'm Dr. Andrea Faber-Taylor, and I teach courses in the area of horticultural food systems. For me, this is an amazing job because I love growing foods and flowers, and I love teaching others how to grow foods and flowers. And I think part of my love for these things stems from my childhood in rural Indiana. Maybe some of you are also Hoosiers. I basically grew up outdoors helping my parents with their farm which included food crops and livestock. And I was active in 4-H and just uh, spent a lot of time playing outdoors and being in nature. Maybe you're interested in food crops such as fruits and vegetables. Maybe you've been hearing about urban agriculture or urban gardens and community gardens. These are just some of the topics that we cover in horticultural food systems. There's a lot of work to be done in these areas such as improvements in the fruits and vegetable plants, and another problem is that we need to work on is how to produce these food crops closer to where most people are currently living, which is in urban areas. So we have, um, rather than uh, trying to truck foods from larger, diff farther away, we are uh, trying to figure out how to grow them closer to our urban areas. Some of the approaches for that include growing food in controlled environments, such as greenhouses and high tunnels, and sometimes indoor spaces with artificial lighting. It also includes rooftop gardens and vertical farms. 
So in our program, we have courses on topics such as urban food production and vegetable crop production. We also teach courses on how to grow fruits and vegetables in more sustainable ways that conserves our natural resources. You may have been hearing in the news how important it is to alter our behaviors as humans so that we do a better job supporting our pollinators and beneficial insects. So we also teach courses in planting design with native flowers and grasses with the edges of farm fields and even in home landscapes to support food crops through pollinators and beneficial insects. And as you can see, we try to do this through a variety of hands-on learning activities by using our study gardens, the sustainable student farm, and working with campus projects and by visiting local farms. I also conduct research examining the benefits of schoolyard green spaces and gardens for students' healthy development, particularly looking at the ways in which green spaces can support children's attention and their science learning. I'm happy to chat with you about any of these topics and feel free to email me even after this event. Uh, I hope you'll consider uh, applying to crop sciences and studying horticultural food systems. Okay, uh, <clears throat> hello everyone. My name is Dean Reekers. I'm a professor in the department and I focus on weeds. So I, I study weed biology, uh, chemistry, biochemistry, and I understand how to control weeds better. So I'm gonna give a, a brief background about myself and then I'll talk about research opportunities for undergraduates. Okay, so this is me pretty much. Uh, I grew up on a farm near Kankakee, Illinois, south of Chicago. My dad was a, a corn and soybean farmer uh, until last year when he retired. But I've always loved plants and biology and science. Uh, but in addition to that, I love baseball. So that's actually me in the top left-hand corner. I was probably about 10 years old. I used to be a pitcher. And then the picture next to it is me on the field of dreams. So it's kind of like a, literally a dream come true. I was holding a baseball. The guy next to me was one of the co-owners of it. And there's a cornfield in the background. So literally, it doesn't get any better than that. Uh, the upper center is actually a daffodil. It's got a red cup. It's a very interesting and also very expensive variety of daffodils, but I'm really interested in those uh, different types of daffodils. And then the three pictures on the right, uh, upper right-hand corner, I'm in the greenhouse studying a weed called water hemp, and I'll talk about that more in a minute. And the bottom right-hand corner is one of my trips to France. So I was actually meeting with a professor in Southern France. Uh, he's a, a chemist, I'm a weed scientist, but we have a collaboration where we're working together. So I love science, I love plants, I love biology, but I love being able to combine that with agriculture and solve problems. Okay, next slide. So there are many, many opportunities for undergraduates to work in my program. We all study weeds, but we're interested in weed resistance to herbicides. And the girl in the upper left-hand corner is Autumn Brandenburg. She's now a senior. She's actually a biochemistry student at U of I she likes working on enzy enzymes and proteins and understanding biochemistry. But I told her you can do that in my lab at Crop Sciences and you'll be doing the same things that you do in your lab classes, but you actually will be doing it for real on research. And she really, really likes that. She's actually taking some classes in our department. The girl on the bottom right is Olivia Overland. She started out as an undergrad in my lab and she's now working on a PhD. And she also studied a weed called Amaranthus tuberculatus. I'll talk about that more in the next slide. That's probably our number one weed in Illinois. It's called water hemp. It's become resistant to almost every herbicide that you apply to it. So again, feel free to email me, um, contact me any way you'd like to. There's many, many opportunities for hands-on undergrad research in my program. Okay, the last slide. So I'd say the biggest weed in our state is called water hemp. Um, it's a weedy amaranth. There are some cultivated green amaranths. Uh, you may have heard of uh, quinoa, also is related, but water hemp is a very, very serious weed. The picture on the upper left-hand corner are water hemp plants we're growing in the greenhouse. Um, the student shown there is Dylan Kerr. He's actually planting and transplanting some water hemp seeds to do a, a research study in the greenhouse. We also bring water hemp into the lab and we do lab studies. So the, the bottom two pictures are uh, thin layer chromatograms where we're studying how water hemp is breaking down and uh, degrading uh, herbicides so fast that they become resistant. So we do greenhouse, we do growth chamber, we do lab work in my lab, 
And on the, the right is actually a field research plot. So we're looking at different combinations of herbicides. So we know that a lot of the herbicides applied by themselves don't work. We're trying to mix herbicides together and try to get what we call a synergistic interaction. So maybe the mixtures work better than applying one or two by themselves. So the bottom line, there are many opportunities to study water hemp and other weeds in my program. And you can do a combination of greenhouse, field, growth chamber, and laboratory. Okay, that's uh, all for my presentation. Thank you, Dean, and, and thank you to the rest of the participants. And so as we're, we sort of wrap up our event this evening, uh, I'm going to turn it over to our recruiter, Erica Oliveras, to talk about the application process uh, and how you can start your journey into crop sciences. Hi, everyone. My name is Erica Oliveras. I am the undergraduate recruiter for crop sciences. And so essentially what that means is that I'm typically the first point of contact for students who are interested in majoring in one of our undergraduate majors here in the Department of Crop Sciences. So if you ever have questions as you're going along through the process, uh, feel free to reach out to me. I'm always here to answer any questions. If for some reason I can't answer your question, I will find out who can answer the question for you. Um, so stay in contact with me throughout the process. Uh, so we're getting close to wrapping up, but before we go, I do want to talk about a few things that I think will be helpful as you guys uh, continue to explore crop sciences. One of the things that we're really proud about here in the Department of Crop Sciences are the scholarships that are available for our undergraduate students in the Department of Crop Sciences. Um, so on the screen, you can see the difference that we have. We actually have scholarships for incoming students. So when you're offered admissions to the Department of Crop Sciences, we have scholarships devoted just for incoming students. Um, then we have scholarships for students who are already enrolled in the Department of Crop Sciences. So you can actually continue to earn scholarships throughout your undergraduate study here in the Department of Crop Sciences. Um, so you'll learn more about the scholarship opportunities once you're offered admissions into our department. Uh, as you can see on the screen, we offered just under $100,000 over the last couple of years. And um, we do that because we have great donors that are contributing to students that uh, are here in the department because we want them to grow um, personally and professionally. So we wanna help fund their studies here in the Department of Crop Sciences. We also have other scholarships here at the University of Illinois. So when you apply for admissions to the University of Illinois, we have university-wide scholarships and we have College of ACES scholarships. Um, so the way things work here is we are the University of Illinois um, and then we're divided into different colleges and so we're part of the College of ACES, Agricultural Consumer Environmental Sciences. Um, and so when you apply for admissions, you actually are automatically reviewed for those scholarships for university and college level scholarships, um, just using your admissions application. So you don't have to do anything extra. We automatically will consider you for those. Um, last year, the College of ACES awarded $3.5 million in scholarships. Um, and like I said, we also help in the Department of Crop Sciences. You'll receive additional information on how to apply for Crop Sciences scholarships once you're offered admission. So keep checking your email um, so that you can learn how to apply for some of the scholarships that we have available in our department. I also want to share a couple of resources that are going to be available through our website. So I don't know if you're familiar with our Crop Sciences website, but I am going to share that with you right now. All right, so you should now be seeing our Crop Sciences website. Um, and we have different tools that are available for students to continue to explore Crop Sciences. So we covered a lot of information today, but we actually offer a lot more in Crop Sciences that we weren't able to cover today. So continue to explore Crop Sciences. Um, and one of the ways you can do that is by visiting the Future Students section of our website. If you scroll over the Future Students, you can actually see different resources that are available. Um, if you click on the admissions portion for undergraduate programs, you are able to watch a video here. I won't play it now, but you can see a video um, that highlights the entire Department of Crop Sciences. So that's another fun way for you to learn about the department. You can schedule a visit right now. We're not hosting visits on campus, but I am always happy to meet with you guys virtually one-on-one. -on -one. So if you feel that you have any questions after today, schedule a visit. We can Zoom, we can chat, we can continue to answer any questions that you uh, may have. 
if you haven't been to campus before um, and you're curious about where we're housed, we're actually housed in Turner Hall. We actually just added a photo tour of Turner Hall. So you can actually click through the photos and see different spaces like, oh, I can do it. So definitely check that out. If you're not familiar with Turner Hall, you can see some of our classrooms, some of our lab spaces, um, some of our atrium. So you, if you're not familiar, definitely explore Turner Hall virtually. Uh, down below, we have some recommendations and some requirements depending on what type of student or what type of applicant you're going to be applying as. So if you're applying as a freshman, we have some recommendations for you. If you're applying as a transfer student, we do have some specific requirements. Um, it's quite a, extensive of information, so I can't go through it right now. Uh, but like I said, set up a time to chat one on one directly with me and we can go through those recommendations or requirements. Uh, but you are welcome to always explore the options here. Once you're ready to apply for admissions, uh, you can actually go directly to the admissions website and continue to explore again based on the type of student. Um, so if you're a freshman, you're going to be applying as a freshman, stay in contact with me. If you're applying as a transfer, again, that's me. If you're a current student on campus, um, you can always reach out directly to me. We also have our academic advisor, Scott Bartlett, who can also help you transition into the department if you have any specific questions as a current University of Illinois student. And then, like I said, we offer a lot more in the Department of Crop Sciences, but continue to explore the degree options. We talked about crop sciences today. We talked about computer science plus crop sciences. If you, um, again, go back to our website, the degree options, we'll cover a little bit more about both majors that we offer here on our campus. Um, so definitely check out these resources that are available. We have a couple of different minors. We talk about the scholarships a little bit more in depth. Student life, again, we have our student ambassadors that are signed into the chat. So if you have any questions about what it's like to be a student in crop sciences, don't hesitate to reach out to our current students that are signed on right now. Um, career opportunities, anything you'd like to know more about, definitely check out the resources. My contact information is down below. So you're always welcome to send me an email, give me a call. Um, sign up for a virtual visit one on one again. I'm still here to help answer any questions. If you have any questions about the admissions process, send those in the chat box. Um, and yeah, that's all I really have. One other fun thing, if you're still hanging out with us tonight, I will be putting in a form, a link in the chat box where you can actually fill that out. And we're going to be sending out prizes for those of you who signed up to participate with us tonight. So fill out the form that I'm going to put in the chat box if you want any fun crop sciences swag. But that's all I have. Any questions, let us know. Great. Thank you, Erica. And I guess uh, thank you all for joining us this evening. That concludes our presentation portion. And so I encourage you, if you have any questions, you can type them in the chat uh, specifically, or we can um, do un unmute yourself and, and ask questions.